The Kuat Drive Yard's Venator-class Star Destroyer was the mainline warship of the Galactic Republic during the Clone Wars. The ship was designed by accomplished engineer Lyra Blissex and introduced in 22 BBY, shortly after the outbreak of the war, to serve as the backbone of the Republic Navy. The standard Venator was 1,137 meters long and 548 meters wide. The most visually distinctive feature of this ship were the dorsal blast doors that ran along the spine of the vessel. These doors retracted to reveal a huge landing bay running almost the length of the ship and dozens of hangars and garages connected to it. This bay allowed the Venator to launch or land its entire fighter complement in a very short time and repair or refuel them during combat with much greater ease. The Venator had two command towers with the starboard tower serving the purpose of a standard helm and command bridge, whereas the port tower was devoted entirely to the control and coordination of starfighter operations. The Venator class represented a return to aggressive power projection by the Republic. Though the Venator was a very capable battleship, its main function was that of a starfighter carrier and launching platform for planetary invasions. Each Venator carried 192 starfighters of either V-19 Torrent or V-Wing class, as well as 36 ARC-170 fighter bombers and 40 LAAT Republic gunships. In addition to its impressive air wing, the Venator also carried 24 all-terrain tactical Enforcer walkers, several ground attack shuttles, and 2,000 clone troopers, allowing the ship to deploy a sizable army to a planet's surface using its LAAT dropships or easily repel any hostile boarding action. The Venator carried a Class 1.0 hyperdrive, affording it an effective travel range of 60,000 light years and powerful sublight engines capable of limited atmospheric flight. In combat, the vessel was armed with eight heavy dual turbolaser turrets, two medium turbolaser cannons, an array of 52 point defense lasers, and four heavy proton torpedo tubes, each carrying 16 torpedoes. The standard crew complement of a Venator class Star Destroyer was 7,400, and the ship carried enough supplies to last for two standard years without restock. The Venator's weapons loadout is unusually versatile for a KDY design, affording an effective point defense grid and even mid-range torpedo weapons in addition to their normal offensive arsenal. This kind of adaptability would be noticeably missing from later Imperial warships, where lack of point defense and total focus on mainstay turbo laser batteries became a frequently exploited flaw. While Venator-class vessels are not capable of landing directly onto a planet's surface like the smaller Acclimator-class assault ship, the vessels are designed to be moored at surface-level docking facilities on Republic worlds. This allows orbital dockyard space to be freed up and massive ground forces to be loaded and unloaded from the capital-grade vessels without the need for groups of shuttlecraft. The Venator's 8 DBY-827 heavy turbolaser emplacements are maintained and operated by extensively trained clone gunnery crews and serve as the vessel's most effective offensive weapons. The batteries are able to alternate the intensity and energy usage of their blasts between various settings over a number of range bands to perform either rapid and high damage close range broadsides or deny free access to wide areas of space by laying down fields of suppressive fire. The Venator's eight aft-mounted engines were fed directly by the ship's enormous hypermatter annihilation reactor. This reactor was placed beneath the lower structure of the main command tower and buried beneath thick layers of armor, making it easily the most well-protected part of the ship. During the Clone Wars, the Venator class was crucial to almost every standard battle line or formation employed by the Republic Navy. The ship served as the center of a conventional battle group, either employed alongside more vessels of its own class or flanked by Architens and Consular class escort vessels. The Venator is emblematic of the general lack of variety seen in the Republic fleet, where the Confederacy deploys a number of ship types meant to fill specific roles within a formation. The Republic have instead chosen to delineate most major fleet functions into as few designs as possible, with the Venator serving as the definitive multi-role platform. This is most likely due to the extremely rapid assembly of the Republic War Machine at the start of the Clone Wars, demanding as much functionality as possible from whatever vessels could be designed and produced in short order. The bridge and ATC towers of the Venator class share almost identical internal layouts, featuring a wide panoramic spread of viewports and a pair of operations pits below the main level. This layout affords a commanding presence to the senior officers and allows them to easily delegate orders to operations staff from almost anywhere on the main level. This design was extremely popular and went on to become the standard configuration of almost every major warship bridge in service to the Imperial Navy following Order 66. 
A number of Venator-class Star Destroyers serving within the Open Circle fleet were modified on the orders of General Anakin Skywalker to carry heavy SPHA turbo laser cannons within their ventral hangar bay. This provided a partial solution to a problem that has plagued Kuat-style capital warships for decades, the lack of ventral weapon systems. The unexpected addition of these turbo lasers led many Confederate warships to their destruction, as CIS commanders had grown used to escaping the bulk of enemy fire as they passed beneath the mass of a Republic warship. When targeted properly and at close range, these SPHA turbo lasers were known to cut down munificent class star frigates in a single shot. The Venator class was extremely popular among Republic officers and Jedi during the Clone Wars for its extreme versatility and effectiveness as a command ship. However, following Order 66, the Galactic Empire only briefly used Venator class ships before abandoning them in favor of Imperial class Star Destroyers. This was because Imperial High Command did not believe that the Venator, being primarily a starfighter carrier, was in keeping with the Tarkin Doctrine, electing instead to develop ships more focused toward intimidation and superior firepower power. Some Venator-class vessels did endure within the Empire as traffic inspection craft or training ships for fighter wings. The vessel served well in these roles, largely thanks to its large flight decks, but the ship's premature removal from frontline combat duty was still decried by many. Despite its abandonment by the Galactic Empire, several decades later, the post-Imperial faction known as the First Order would go on to find a renewed appreciation for the role of starfighter carriers, developing the resurgent class Star Destroyer, whose design borrows heavily from that of the Venator class. For many years, the Venator-class Star Destroyer served as the greatest symbol of the Galactic Republic's naval power, and contributed to countless victories for the Clone Army, from the Battle of Ren Var to the invasion of Utapau. Names like Resolute and Negotiator would go on to become almost as legendary as the Jedi who commanded them, and their presence on the battlefield would always be cause for concern to any Separatist commander standing in their way. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.